Hong Kong opportunities in the Greater Bay Area. The Greater Bay Area Initiative has been in the spotlight since the formal signing of the Framework Agreement on Deepening Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Cooperation in the Development of the Greater Bay Area in 2017. This talk will be looking at Hong Kong's intended role within the Greater Bay Area and the opportunities presented by the initiative to Hong Kong's business and legal sectors. It's a matter of paramount importance to the future of Hong Kong. The big picture of the Greater Bay Area is as a network of thriving cities, each with a focused specialization. The geographical location encompasses two special administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau, and nine mainland cities, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Foshan, Zhuhai, Huizhou, Dongguan, Zhongshan, Jiangmen, and Zhaoqing, with a total population of 86 million and a total area of around 56,000 kilometers. These cities will be connected together by infrastructure and policies, forming a self-contained economic system. The Greater Bay Area aims to assemble the best in class in different areas, combining their strengths to work together. Each city is given a specific development goal. For the core cities, Hong Kong is a trade hub, financial services and dispute resolution center. Macau is a tourist destination and a commerce hub with Portuguese-speaking countries. Guangzhou is a technological, educational and cultural center. Shenzhen is an innovation and technological hub. Other node cities generally focus on secondary industries. For instance, Dongguan is a manufacturing hub. The synergies of these elites, it is expected, will drive each to be more competitive. This concept is at the core of the Greater Bay Area Initiative. The integration of the area's key cities to work together seamlessly and friction-free. The GDP of the Greater Bay Area in 2020 was 1,668 billion US dollars. And this GDP is 25 million US dollars more than the whole of Canada. So what is Hong Kong's role in the Greater Bay Area? Quoting directly from the framework agreement signed in 2017, the role for Hong Kong is, quote, to consolidate and enhance its status as an international financial transportation and trade center, strengthen its status as a global offshore rim and B business hub, and an international asset management center, promote the development of its professional services and innovation and technology industries, and establish a center for international legal and dispute resolution services in the Asia-Pacific region, unquote. The economic integration of Hong Kong in the mainland has been an ongoing process. The Greater Bay Area concept is a natural extension of Hong Kong's traditional role as a trading and market entrepot, linking China and the rest of the world. Historically, Hong Kong from the 1950s to the 1970s grew to be a manufacturing hub, and it was largely Hong Kong factory owners who drove the initial investment in factories in southern China in the wake of China's opening up from 1978. Following Deng Xiaoping's historic visit to Shenzhen in 1992, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and the Hong Kong capital market went on to play a pivotal role, listing eight shares of Chinese companies starting in 1993, which paved the way for enormous investment in China's economy and the growth of China's own capital markets. So what are the unique advantages of Hong Kong? Why is Hong Kong so important within this initiative? Well, Hong Kong has an attractive business environment. The government has sought to maintain a big market, small government approach, allowing businesses to thrive. The government imposes a low and straightforward tax regime. There are three kinds of direct taxes in Hong Kong, profits tax, salaries tax, and property tax. The tax rate is among the lowest in the world. The city at the same time has high standards of anti-money laundering. The city has a strong financial services sector. It's the most important economic pillar of Hong Kong and perhaps one of the best globally. The Hong Kong financial markets have a range of well-regulated financial products for investors. It also has one of the most active stock markets in the world and has particular strength in IPOs. Even during COVID, the Hong Kong IPO market achieved a historic high in terms of total funds raised of 13.9 billion US dollars in the first quarter of 2021, ranking third globally. Hong Kong has an excellent geographical location. Its location in the South Asian Pacific region makes it well-placed as a transport and trade hub. 
A sheltered natural harbour gives further advantages for shipping activities. It has long served as an important entrepot for mainland China and a transshipment port of the South Asian Pacific region. Trade activities in Hong Kong are also supported by its no-tariff regime. The Hong Kong airport also makes important contributions to trade. In 2019, it was ranked the world's busiest cargo airport for the 10th consecutive year. The total cargo handled accounted for about 43% of the total value of Hong Kong's external trade. The proximity with China, of course, gives Hong Kong many advantages. As an SAR of China, the world's most populated country, and it's the world's second largest economy, Hong Kong is still used as a launch pad for some businesses to enter the China market. Hong Kong was one of the first offshore markets to start renminbi business in 2004, and it currently has the largest pool of renminbi liquidity outside of China. Hong Kong is a well-established legal system. Its reputable system is based on the rule of law, which makes Hong Kong a desirable location for operating businesses and international dispute resolution. In the 2021 International Arbitration Survey, the Hong Kong International Arbitration Center was the third most preferred and used arbitral institution worldwide. The rich common law traditions make Hong Kong a popular location for international corporations to set up their businesses, and I'll talk about that some more in a while. Hong Kong has a well-educated and hard-working population. The city has good tertiary institutions, with five universities ranked within the top 100 in the QS ranking. The government has invested over 100 billion Hong Kong dollars to promote in innovation and technology, in particular the establishment of HKSTP. It provides a good platform in nurturing next-generation talent. This leads many to be optimistic that Hong Kong will thrive in its intended role in the GBA and is well placed to be the central operational hub of the Greater Bay Area. Now let's turn to the implications of the Greater Bay Area Initiative for Innovation and Technology. I'll focus on the financial aspects. The word innovation appeared numerous times in the framework agreement of the Greater Bay Area. In fact, one explicit goal was to build a global technology and innovation hub. The initiative aims to coordinate worldwide technological and innovative resources, driving efficiency in research and development. This goal is particularly important for mainland cities like Shenzhen. Apart from research and development, what other roles can Hong Kong play in the rise of the tech industry? Since the launch of the Greater Bay Area Initiative, the Hong Kong and mainland governments have established various policies to support local innovation and technology development. For example, to promote cross-border technological collaboration, the government launched the Guangdong Hong Kong Technology Cooperation Funding Scheme. The scheme provides funding for research projects which involve the element of Hong Kong and Guangdong, or Hong Kong and Shanghai collaboration. The Hong Kong and Shenzhen governments are jointly developing a Hong Kong-Shenzhen Innovation and Technology Park. Such increasing connections between mainland and Hong Kong research and development companies should encourage talent flow. This may underpin progress arising from these corporate collaborations. Hong Kong companies may also have greater opportunities to access mainland investment capital. Hong Kong and China's capital markets have also taken steps to support the financing of tech companies. Traditionally, companies with weighted voting rights structures couldn't list on the Hong Kong exchange. Low growth traditional sectors dominated the Hong Kong exchange, and in 2017, new economy companies made up only 3% of the Hong Kong market's capitalization. This was a barrier particularly unfriendly to tech companies, since many tech company founders want to retain control of their businesses by having weighted voting rights, preventing hostile takeover bids, and the creeping, lowering levels of control through dilution. This means that these tech companies often preferred to list on stock markets without such restrictions, such as the New York Exchange or NASDAQ. The Hong Kong listing rules underwent reform in 2018, allowing these companies to be listed under Chapter 8A of the Hong Kong Exchange's listing rules, subject to extra requirements such as a suitability test and limits on weighted voting rights. This relaxation in the listing rules requirements drew more tech companies, particularly Chinese tech companies, to list in Hong Kong. Now let's turn to biotech companies. This is a type of tech company currently in ascendancy in stock markets globally. 
Biotech, as defined in the Hong Kong Exchange's listing rules, is the application of science and technology to produce commercial products with a medical or other biological application. After the 2018 reform, new listing rules for listing pre-revenue biotech companies were set out in Chapter 18A of the listing rules. Research and development costs for biotech companies are usually very high, typically meaning that they have no profits and cannot fulfill the standard listing requirements. Section 18A offers an alternative listing pathway for biotech companies. After the 2018 listing reforms, many biotech companies were listed and are now making significant contributions to the market. As of the 30th of June 2021, out of the 67 new healthcare listings since 2018, which raised 209 billion Hong Kong dollars in IPO funds in total, 33 of these were pre-revenue biotech companies, accounting for 87 billion Hong Kong dollars of IPO funds. The Hang Seng Index, Hong Kong Listed Biotech Index, which has 54 constituents and 21 Chapter 18A stocks, as at the end of June 2021, had generated a return of 55% since its launch in December 2019. This is a win-win situation. Biotech companies raise the investment they need while the Hong Kong stock market continues to thrive. Also, the listing reforms introduced a new Chapter 19C of the listing rules, which permitted tech companies to secondary list on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. This encouraged some tech giants from China, previously only listed on the New York Exchange or NASDAQ, to secondary list on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So Hong Kong is the international financial centre of the Greater Bay Area, provides a listing and capital raising platform for biotech companies and other tech companies in the Greater Bay Area. The liberalisation of listing biotech companies, as well as allowing tech companies to list with weighted voting rights, is in line with the Greater Bay Area's innovation goal. The development landscape in mainland cities like Shenzhen may lead to a surge in the number of biotech companies. R&D plays an important role in the development of biotech, and this requires continuous funding to maintain high-quality research output. Hong Kong's strong IPO market provides excellent opportunities for biotech companies in the Greater Bay Area to connect with international investors and access significant amounts of capital. In addition to IPOs, several listed biotech companies have also conducted successful post-listing fundraisings in the Hong Kong stock market. Inevent Biologics, for example, raised 4.8 billion Hong Kong dollars in two rounds of share placings. This encouraging capital raising landscape leads to investors and pharmaceutical companies being more willing to invest in new ideas and innovation. Since the relaxation of the listing rules, Hong Kong quickly surged to be the second largest biotech fundraising hub. According to the former chief executive of the exchange, Charles Lee, speaking at the Hong Kong Exchange's Biotech Summit in 2020, Hong Kong has the potential to surpass NASDAQ to become the world's largest biotech fundraising center in the next five to 10 years. The number of Chinese pre-revenue biotech companies listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange has surpassed that of the New York Exchange and NASDAQ in recent months. There were 13 such listings in Hong Kong, raising 4.2 billion US dollars, while there were nine listings in the US, raising 1.7 billion US dollars. Data indicates that Hong Kong has the potential to replace NASDAQ and the New York Exchange as an international listing hub for biotech companies. Given the US-China trade tensions, it seems even more likely that Chinese tech companies may choose to list on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The Chinese government's regulatory restrictions on tech companies in certain sectors may lead further to tech companies being likely to choose the Hong Kong Exchange as an international listing venue. Also, the Shanghai Star Board, its official name is the Shanghai Stock Exchange Science and Technology Innovation Board, was founded in 2019 and has NASDAQ-like features. The Star Board aims to attract mainland tech companies to list in China as an alternative to a US listing. Also through Stock Connect, which I will talk about in a while, the Hong Kong and Shanghai markets have closer connections. The collaboration of the Hong Kong and Shanghai market could therefore potentially create a world-class tech listing hub. China's 14th five-year plan sets out a dual circulation economic strategy to make China less reliant on foreign imports. 
Economic integration schemes between Hong Kong and the mainland are very much in line with this proposed internal circulation strategy, in particular Stock Connect and Bond Connect. These Connect schemes, by targeting the needs of financial services within the mainland market, are consistent with the strategy of internal circulation. Stock Connect is a mutual market access channel which allows Hong Kong and international investors to trade shares listed on the Shenzhen and Shanghai stock exchanges. This is known as northbound trading. In 2020, biotech companies were included in the scope of Stock Connect scheme. Similarly, mainland Chinese investors can trade stocks listed on the Hong Kong exchange. Bond Connect operates in a similar way, although in relation to the bond market at the moment, only northbound trading is currently in implemented. It is expected, however, that southbound bond trading will be available later this year. Following Stock Connect and Bond Connect, the first Connect scheme specific to the Greater Bay Area, Wealth Management Connect, was announced in May 2020 and could potentially launch in the second half of 2021. Wealth Management Connect will allow eligible mutual funds, bank deposits, insurance products, securities and potentially also pension funds to be sold throughout the whole Greater Bay Area. All Hong Kong residents can take part in the scheme, while only those in the mainland with a hukou in the Greater Bay Area can participate. Through Wealth Management Connect, residents within the Greater Bay Area will be able to invest in Hong Kong wealth management products and Hong Kong financial services providers will gain direct access to a market with a population of 86 million. There is proposed to be an aggregate overall quota of 150 billion RMB flowing in each direction, and each individual can at most invest up to 1 million RMB. At the launch stage of the scheme, banks will be the only authorised distributors. Products available will be in the low to medium risk category, and must be governed by the laws of the retail location where they're sold. Operational details are expected to be available soon as regulators in Hong Kong and China signed a Memorandum of Understanding in February 2021 to release their respective guidelines on the scheme. Hong Kong financial institutions are currently enthusiastic about the opportunities likely to arise from Wealth Management Connect and other policies likely to be forthcoming. Wealth Management Connect is expressly intended to support domestic financial and fund management businesses within the Greater Bay Area. Fund managers must create domestic domiciled funds in order to take part in the scheme, as USITS funds won't be allowed. Fund managers are likely to prioritise establishing Hong Kong or mainland domiciled funds to take advantage of the scheme. The Connect schemes create a critical mass of cross-border investors between Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area which is likely to boost the development of financial technology and AI. The cross-border element of Connect schemes may lead financial institutions to use new technologies in the transaction processes. One unique element is that the Greater Bay Area involves three jurisdictions with separate systems of currency, tax and law, meaning additional costs in doing business. The proper application of fintech such as AI and blockchain can significantly lower the costs and inconvenience throughout these processes. It can produce a digital highway, allowing human capital and goods to flow smoothly. The Greater Bay Area, particularly Hong Kong and Shenzhen, should be well placed to benefit from this need for fintech. This should give rise to a symbiotic relationship between the advanced tech of Shenzhen and the developed financial services of Hong Kong. Shenzhen will have Hong Kong as a platform for the commercial application of their cutting-edge tech, while the Hong Kong side can adopt and develop state-of-the-art financial tech applications. This synergy has the potential to drive the growth of the entire Greater Bay Area. Specifically for Hong Kong, it will have access to the investor capital of a region with a population of 86 million, a market larger than, for example, the whole of Germany. Clearly, the mainland market has much greater potential in many ways than the Hong Kong market on its own. In particular, high net worth individuals will be likely to be target clients for Hong Kong financial services providers. When establishing funds, the use of domestic fund structures in Hong Kong or China is likely to expand, as only locally domiciled funds are eligible for these connect schemes. 
the inherent demand of the Greater Bay Area market for both institutional and retail investment services should drive the range of investment products available. The mainland and Hong Kong governments are closely working together to integrate their economic systems. While such integration moves forward, the legal sector, which is closely intertwined with the commercial world, may also undergo rapid change. So turning now to the legal arena, the Greater Bay Area Initiative will definitely impact Hong Kong's legal environment, especially in the business sector. The Greater Bay Area promotes cross-border commercial activities and the surge in commercial activities is likely to lead to disputes and increased demand for dispute resolution. The Greater Bay Area Initiative aims to support Hong Kong as an international dispute resolution centre. However, there will be challenges in the Greater Bay Area in this regard as it encompasses three different legal systems. A framework arrangement on legal exchange and mutual learning was entered into between the Hong Kong SAR and the People's High Court of Guangdong Province as part of an initiative in 2019 and aims to strengthen legal exchange and collaboration in the Greater Bay Area. Also, details of the pilot measures for Hong Kong and Macau legal practitioners to obtain mainland practice qualifications were released in October 2020. Lawyers in Hong Kong and Macau with five years' experience are eligible to take the Greater Bay Area Legal Professional Exam. Lawyers can then provide legal services in the nine municipalities of the Greater Bay Area on specified commercial matters. This will provide significant opportunities to Hong Kong and Macau lawyers as they'll have a much bigger market for their legal services. It may also encourage Hong Kong entrepreneurs to start businesses in the Greater Bay Area as they will be able to use Hong Kong legal services in the event of a dispute. Opportunities are not limited to individual lawyers, but are also available to law firms. Guangzhou has liberalized the requirements for Hong Kong law firms to form partnerships with Guangzhou law firms by removing the minimum capital injection requirement. This allows more cross-border partnerships to be formed, giving Hong Kong law firms greater opportunities to access the mainland market. In addition to the flow of talent and services, another policy focus is cross-border commercial disputes. The policy primarily focuses on mediation and arbitration. Mediation often leads to settlements, which may be potentially of benefit to litigants. The China and Hong Kong governments are promoting the use of these forms of dispute resolution, as well as facilitating the execution of proceedings in cross-border disputes. The Hong Kong and mainland governments designed an investment agreement in 2017 under SEPA, which provides a mediation mechanism for investment disputes. The mechanism aims to promote the use of mediation in cross-border investment disputes, allowing mainland investors to access Hong Kong mediation services, as well as letting Hong Kong investors appoint designated mainland mediation institutions and mediators to resolve investment disputes. Specifically, for the Greater Bay Area, a proposal was endorsed to set up a Greater Bay Area mediation platform. The platform's responsibility range from facilitating the use of mediation to discharging the role of a standard setting body. Setting a standard for mediation within the Greater Bay Area is of essence since the region is comprised of these three different legal systems I've mentioned, which might have different rules for mediation. For mediation to become an important dispute resolution mechanism in the Greater Bay Area, there has to be a standard integrating the practices of all three jurisdictions. Arbitration as a form of dispute resolution for commercial disputes may be a preferred option as it's conducted on a confidential basis in some cases. The mainland and Hong Kong government signed a supplemental arrangement concerning mutual enforcement of arbitral awards, which detailed the reciprocal arrangements for the enforcement of cross-border commercial disputes. For example, this arrangement allows simultaneous enforcement applications in both Hong Kong and the mainland. Previously, creditors could only enforce proceedings in one jurisdiction at a time. This mechanism provides better protection to creditors in relation to arbitral awards, as well as simplifying the procedures for enforcing an award, as successful enforcement is always a crucial concern. Although this policy doesn't specifically apply only to the Greater Bay Area, it may encourage commercial disputes within the Greater Bay Area to use Hong Kong to arbitrate disputes. 
It's also worth mentioning that in line with the innovation goal of the Greater Bay Area, the Hong Kong government also supports innovative means of dispute resolution. The government has supported and encouraged the private sector in the development of an online dispute resolution platform known as eBram. The platform has great potential and could be fully utilized as an integrated business activity expands within the Greater Bay Area. Going forward, Hong Kong's legal system may be prepared by some international companies as well as Hong Kong companies operating in the Greater Bay Area. The authorities are still exploring this possibility. In particular, a pilot measure was implemented in Chennai in October 2020, allowing wholly owned Hong Kong enterprises in Chennai to agree on the choice of applicable law when they enter, in, enter into civil and commercial contracts, even for wholly PRC-related matters. This measure is expected to encourage the use of Hong Kong legal services, as well as encouraging Hong Kong companies to establish their businesses in Chennai. The option to use common law in a business context could be an attractive feature for international companies. However, it's yet to be seen whether there will be relaxations allowing the expanded use of Hong Kong law in the Greater Bay Area. It's clearly an important issue for Hong Kong to build on the opportunities offered by increasing integration with China through close cooperation and the provision of legal services, while at the same time preserving Hong Kong's robust common law system. The way forward for Hong Kong to integrate into and build on the business opportunities offered by the Greater Bay Area market is in many areas still at a conceptual stage, and the COVID pandemic has delayed progress. However, it's very clear that the train has left the station and Hong Kong finance and legal professionals are preparing to face the challenges as well as capitalize on the opportunities of being effectively part of a much larger market.